do, 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 do. What's going on, people? Let's see. All right. Let's see where are people. Yes, I started it a little early because I'm checking out where people are. Some folks may be on the YouTube channel. Other folks may be elsewhere. Let's see. <laughs> this is hilarious. This is hilarious. I want to say something, and I just noticed this. If you don't like the channel, why do you stay subscribed to the channel? I don't get that. That's just crazy. Okay, uh, I see people are in different places. We're going to get this started in a minute. Just want to see where the comments are. And I think people are... I'll just put that back there. If anything happens, I'll, I'll get to it. I'll just leave that up there. Okay, it's 8 o'clock. Let's just jump into it. Get to the meat of the matter. And I'm going to tell you why I'm doing this. All right, got people on there. This thing will not disappear. Okay, we'll leave it up there. All right. I've got some private coaching groups, and I've been talking to people. The, the big thing is, and I was talking to someone about this today, is knowing what to do. There's this movie, and I think I've mentioned it in the video before, but I'm going to mention it again. Get it. It's called Confessions, Alec Baldwin, Ben Kingsley, I believe. And there's this pivotal moment in the movie where this guy says something, and it just stayed with me forever. And the guy was saying, you know, people don't know what the right thing is to do. And the guy who had committed this murder, he says, no, that's not the problem. It isn't that people don't know the right thing to do. It's people don't know what is the right thing. Once they know what the right thing is, they do it just like that. No, he didn't snap his fingers. But that was really, really poignant with me and it stayed with me forever. And that's where I think many of you are. You've got money talent, drive, you want to do something, but you don't know what the right thing is to do. Therefore, you're incapacitated and just hanging out and not really doing the thing that you want to do. And I think that is what's causing a problem. And we're going to address that. And the first thing that you can get past this process is you need to uh, you need to make mistakes. I know it's painful. I know it's uh, a little crazy. I know it's a little scary at times, but you've got to make mistakes. You've got to put yourself out there. If you're not making mistakes, you're not learning all the lessons that you can learn. It's not happening. So that's the first thing. And that's part of the kind of capacitation, becoming incapacitated, becoming scared. And that's one of the reasons that people are so pulled and drawn into the third party platforms because the big what to do is solved. It's like, okay, well, here's the platform. There are people you can go through the exploratory process of saying, hey, I can do this. I can do that. I can sell this product versus um, going through a more in-depth analysis. It's, it's probably going to be up tomorrow <clears throat> or later because you know the schedule got behind this week. But I had an interview with Seville of Gumroad, the founder and CEO of Gumroad. And I found out that he's not he's 22 years old. So far they've raised $30 million for the company and a staff of 24. And we had a really he's a very, very unique person when I get it because he agreed to do Badass products by badass hustlers. So uh, that would be up probably tomorrow. Or, yeah, tomorrow. And just the philosophy of how Gumroad came to be. It's not the same philosophy that I chose for my thing. It's 
in the same zip code. I have said this several times. I've been called full of shit. I've been told that you're lying. I don't do this for the money. I do this for the freedom. That's my currency. That's my wealth. But if you are living a lack based lifestyle, you can't see it. You're just like, he's fucking lying. No one just does. No, no, no. But once again, when we have these conversations and that's why I'm doing these things, they're very snapshot, snapshot. You cannot get the totality of someone's life experience and desires from one snapshot unless it's an incredible snapshot. And that's what people are doing. They're taking incomplete thoughts and processes and making complete assumptions or complete decisions. And often they're erroneous. Now, how does this relate to you and what you're doing with looking for a business? The, the process is you've got to build you first. You've got to build your life first. You've got to, what's going to excite me? And many people misconstrue this because I have debates with people about the passion thing. And the. Uh, I think determination is way more important than passion, but other people are rooted with passion. I think they're the same. It's just determination is, and I'll give you an example. Say someone cuts you off. Is it passion that makes you run up behind their bumper and start honking or actually run? I've seen people do this, run, whip around the person, get in front and slam on their brakes. Is that passion? No, it's determination. They're determined to let that person know that they're offended. That's determination. That's not passion. And you will see, and maybe you've been experienced a, 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 a party of this when you piss someone off or you did someone wrong and you've seen them you, you your whole life. You've seen them at this level. And you piss them off, and the next thing you know, they're like here. You can't even see them anymore. They're operating at such a high level, it is scaring you. That's determination. That's not passion. So once you figure out what the right thing is, and you put the determination there, then you can have something wonderful. So back to why you need to make mistakes, why you need to experiment when you don't know what to do, and that's a big, big conundrum for many people, you are wasting an incredible amount of time. When you are waiting on that mythical, majestical moment when everything's going to align and the money and all, it's never coming. You make those moments. You don't wait for them. You make them. So say you have this idea, right? And you want to build something. And maybe year five, you finally get around to it. You have lost five years of experimentation, feedback, markets, because markets change. If you started in five years, like let's take YouTube. YouTube has changed so much that what used to work doesn't work. You have a lot of creators who were the, you know, who just by virtue of being first became very successful in terms of fame and money. And now that you have to work, they're closing their channels. They stopped producing. They just went away. That is what happens when you're afraid to make mistakes, when you're afraid to change. But you got to make mistakes. So today, you know, this is going to be kind of uh, there's going to be some task. I want you to tomorrow to go out and make five small mistakes. And when I say small you're not going to lose any money. <laughs> You're not going to lose your freedom. Just make five mistakes. And how do you make these mistakes? You create a container and you ask yourself, what is the worst thing that's going to happen if I do this and it goes wrong? And if the earth doesn't end and you don't lose money and you don't become car incarcerated or really, really bad stuff's going to happen, then you go for it. Now, I want you to do this because when you learn that you can make mistakes, and the world will not end, it's not a bad thing, then you will start to speed up on this, what should I do? Because I had someone do this exercise recently, and it, it was very, it was really illuminating because they were trying to figure out what to do. Everybody, I believe, has a talent, a skill, a special something. I believe everyone has this. But what your skill or your strength may be you, it may not be exciting. And I call it the boyfriend syndrome. 
and I, I've been that dude. When a girl is dating a guy, she wants to be proud of him. She wants to tell her friends and family, wow, I am with this guy and he's hardworking and he does this. And they want to go in with a little wow factor. It's like, oh, he does this. And there's nothing wrong with that. But the problem is in our society, that becomes so important that who the person is gets lost in the shuffle. So for you who are trying to start a business, you kind of getting caught up in the, the wow factor or the, the bling bling or the shine shine or the sparkle sparkle without really a deep regard to the substance of the matter. And that's why you have all of this. I don't know what to do. Uh, Amazon's going to work for me. eBay's going to work for me. When you're incredibly fucking talented, if you're stop being scared, um, you what you can do, because uh, there's something I want to share, but I can't because it's still going on. But I managed to legally pull something off that people have paid fifty thousand dollars with an attorney who couldn't pull off, and I pulled it off without an attorney. Now, how did this happen? Am I brilliant? No. Am I super special? No. I am not afraid to make mistakes. That's how I did it, because I wasn't afraid to make mistakes. I created a loop. What's the worst thing that's going to happen in the container? And I went for it, and the results were awe-inspiring. Later on, there was a book coming out because of the experience. Now, once again, I'm not brilliant. Uh, I will say this again, just based on some of the comments, some of your channels that I watch. Some of you are way smarter than I am, but you're scared little bitches. It's like, if I do this and if I fail, the world's going to end. And that fear, that fear keeps you in this small fucking circle and you can't realize your greatness. That's why I get all of the feedback and the flack on those no Amazon, no eBay videos. And people are just like, you know, if you're going to build a business, you know, and you're not using Amazon and all this other stuff, then you're just really screwing yourself. I talked to a guy who started the company at 19. He's 22, probably soon to be 23. And he's raised $30 million for his company. And the company is nowhere near where they wanted it to go. Very interesting interviews, a very interesting badass products by badass hustlers. And when you look at that, and I'll just go ahead, like the old me would have been intimidated to talk to him. The new me of the last 15 years, I am like, this is so fucking exciting because I haven't had his level of success monetarily, but I've had his level of success mentally, that freedom of doing something and seeing it come to fruition. So when you get that, that experience of starting something, when you meet people that you deem successful, you're not intimidated, you're not jealous, you are peers. And it's a wonderful experience, but if you don't make mistakes and you don't put yourself out there, you don't get there. So mistakes are fundamental, mistakes are important and you got to make them. So go out tomorrow, make five calculated mistakes and get your feedback. The criteria, once again, what's the worst thing that could happen? Okay. Can I handle the worst thing that can happen? All right. And let's just be clear. Do not go out and do anything that's going to get you put in jail. Don't go out and do anything that's going to hurt somebody because People on the internet hear stuff and like, well, he told me to go do this. And no, I didn't tell you to do that. I told you to put it in a container that will hurt no one, break no laws. And so you can make a mistake and get measurable feedback so you can build upon the experience. Next thing is experimentation. When you don't know what to do, and sometimes that's a really honest thing. You're like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what my talents are. You just don't really know. Quickest way you can get there is start doing as much shit as you can that you will find out. It's like, okay, I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that. Then at one point, bam, 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 bam. Dots start connecting. But if you continue to not do anything, you continue to, mm, I don't 
it'll happen when it happens. When the Lord says it's good for me, when the Lord decides that it's time for me to get my glory and blessings, that is that scared little bitch talk. I don't care if you're offended. In my opinion, I believe in God and I believe God is hands off. It's on you. It's on you, your friends, your family, your whatever coalitions you can build. It's on you. So experimentation, because once you get past, I can make mistakes, then experimentation becomes much easier. It's not as scary. It's not as over the top insane. So you get that going on and then you become what I called, you know, you're building your own library. You're building your own library. Uh, you're creating a feedback loop and you are building something. So experimentation. Now, what do I mean exactly about experimentation? Say you have, and this is something that I got from Sahil and his thing is start small and something that I believe in, he said it and I didn't even bring it up, was instead of trying to get everyone to do what you want them to do and become quote a manager, bump, become proficient in what you're doing. And going back to my legal journey here, I spent hours in the legal library studying stuff. And when my moment happened, I was ready because I was prepared because I studied, I did the heavy lifting, I did the hard work. But when you are looking for other people to do it, when you're looking for someone else to do it, you miss the experience and growth of accomplishment and learning something. So that becomes a problem and that becomes a big, big problem. So with experimentation, if say you want to build an engine and I'm going to give you a great example of this. And it's not an engine, but there was this guy. And I can't remember his name at the moment, but he was one of those extreme sport athletes and he got in an accident and he lost his leg from, I believe, the knee down. Yeah, from top of his knee down, he lost his leg. And once he got better, he still had the urge to compete. And all of the prosthetics that were available were insufficient for what he wanted. So he built one. He went in the garage. He put some hydraulics together. He built a prototype. Now understand, he was just building this to solve his problem. He wasn't looking to change the world. He was like, I want to race. I need a certain kind of prosthetic. So he made his own. And in the course of doing that, he built a million dollar company. So this is what happens when you get your hands dirty and when you go out there and you build things and you put stuff together. And that comes from experimentation because the first prototype he made, it didn't work. The second one didn't work, but he just kept building and experimenting, getting the feedback. And he built a, a model that worked very well, so well that he was able to create a company and sell it to other people who were sharing his same situation. Wasn't the goal. The goal was to solve his problem, which started very locally. And it, it's a really, really sane and sensible way to build something. So if you want to build an engine or something, you can do this locally. If you don't have the stuff, partner with someone and say, look, I want to build this engine. And if you got to go to someone in an apprenticeship or, you know, help them out with their business, find out what that person who has what you need needs and you can work a deal from that but many people want to be managers don't want to do the heavy lifting don't want to learn the business it's just want to put the pieces together and make money it just doesn't work when you chase money for money you can make money for a while but typically it's short-lived like if you uh and i've said this several times and you know and one of the reasons i put the hill here is he is in that world that many of us uh, appreciate and an awe of. He is in the Silicon Valley, the entrepreneur, the venture. He's in that world. And it's a very small world. It's a very small world. He was the second employee at Pinterest. He built this grid. He built the Pinterest grid. So these folks all know each other and they hang out because they're very remarkable. And when you are 22, you build a business, you raise 30 million. You can't talk to someone who hasn't done it without them acting a little weird that you own you at times. Because it's just like, oh, really? Because they haven't done it. 
and their perspective and context is woefully insufficient to understand you. So with that, once you start experimenting, putting stuff together, your context expands, your perspective expands, your information base expands, and the more the bigger your information base is, the more dots you can connect quickly. And that's the important thing. Because if you can see like uh, what I think is going to happen in education, education as we have it now is unsustainable. It's too, I mean, you've got people going into mortgage level debt for degrees that will not pay that debt back. That's a problem. We're going to have a different mod modality of, of learning. You're going to have somebody that's going to put together a school and people are going to get results and it'll be this such, such and such academy and they're going to make money and that's just going to be the future. That's where we're heading. And a lot of these well-endowed universities are going to offer their classes for free because they have the money to operate where the smaller schools are going out of business. That's coming. And remember what I said about malls. Remember, I, I told all of you who were in resale, do not open up a store. I've said, don't do it. Don't do it. Mall space is at an all time high. Malls are closing. Retails, uh, retail strip malls are everywhere that are unoccupied. Listen to me on this. <laughs> Listen to me on this. So with the experimentation, start small. Start really, really small. If you notice, I've gone back to what I did in 2009, 2010, 2011. Just a different, you know, I've just gone back and it's smaller, uh, the smaller groups. It's a smaller email list, but it's very, very cohesive and it converts very well. When you start small, you're going to make the same mistakes whether you were big or uh, little and it's just more containable. Going back to what I said about what's the worst thing that can happen? So when you have a smaller list, you don't have all of those things that uh, that it could be a real problem for you. So experimentation. This is experimentation in hand. So that, that's going to be a really big, big part of it. Now, this is something that I believe in and I believe a lot of my products are this. Build something worthy. You got two things you can do. You can build something pedestrian and you can build something worthy. And both will make you money. Both will definitely make you money. But when you build something worthy, you get a different kind of currency one of self-esteem, one of pride, and it carries out when you meet other people. It's fascinating. So when you're building this, and when I say build something worthy, like take the people who build prosthetics for animals who are missing legs. That's something worthy. It's not like rocket science. So just, just some things. And I'm telling you this because many people feel that they have to do this to be successful, or they have to do that to be successful. If you make a better cookie and it sells to millions of people, you built something worthy. So when I say worthy, I'm not talking about all oh, the spirituality and you. No, no, no. I'm talking about something that serves in people, meets a solution, built, creates a solution and helps people do things, make their lives better. Now, starting where you are, now let's get to the core of this whole talk. That's what I'm calling them, talks. Everyone wants to be big, but you can't run before you take your first step. It's impossible. It's not going to happen. So start small. Instead of thinking of, I'm going to build this million-dollar business this year, say I'm going to build this million-dollar business in the next five to ten years, and this year, I'm shooting for 25,000 because this is the thing. Everyone's like, build, 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 scale as quickly as possible and seek an exit strategy or something. Enjoy the journey. One of the reasons that I could sit here and talk smack to you folks on YouTube for six years is this shit's fun to me. It's fun. And the stories are coming back and I can go ahead and give you a heads up. The first story, which was going to happen today, but I ran out of time because I'm going to make it better than the other stories, is six monkeys and two hookers. 
And it's a Peter Street story that I've never shared, and it's a fucking trip. It's fun, but it wasn't fun in the beginning. I made it fun, and I want you to really encapsulate what I just told you. This was not fun in the beginning, but I made it fun. You can make something fun. It doesn't have to be organically fun in the beginning, but by becoming good at it, building a certain level of proficiency with it, you can build it and make it fun. Now, here are some of your tasks, because uh, with these talks, I'm not going to keep them too long. The goal was to keep it under 30 minutes, and uh, that's pretty much where we are. I want you to go out tomorrow or tonight, you know, depending on what time zone you're in, make five mistakes. Then... I want you to write down this. What kind of lifestyle do you want to have? And I, I say this frequently because many people build businesses with little regard to the lifestyle. And then, then they get married and have kids and they don't see their family. And they're just like, fuck, you know, life is just handing you bullshit. No, you built that bullshit. You pray for that bullshit. And that's what you got. So if you go ahead and write down what kind of life that you want to have, before you start building, that's going to seep into the DNA of your company. Like uh, my thing, I'm big on freedom. Uh, this this is number one priority. That is not going to change. I am. If uh, someone said, hey, Glennon, we're going to give you a $300, $3 million a year contract, but it's going to require you to give up 90% of your freedom. No. And many of you was like, you're fucking crazy. And but me, no. It's that quick. No, because that violates all of the philosophy that I have set up over the last 15 years. I would rather make way less than that and be as free as I am now than to make that and be in some kind of cage or to have all these obligations where I can't be myself. I can't say what I want. I can't express. No, 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 no. This this is my currency is freedom. Uh, when I have these, you know, these exchanges with people online and I say exactly what I mean. I like that. And I'm not giving that up. So when you are building your philosophy, when you're building your life, say you are a surfer dude and you want to be able to go surfing every day. Okay. Hands number one, you got to live somewhere near a beach. And we all know living near a beach is expensive. So you have to make some money. So you go back. Okay. I want to live at the beach. All right, the housing in the beach area is 3000 a month. Okay, so I'm gonna need more than that. So I need a business that's gonna give me about 12000 a month so I can have a decent place. Oh, but the business can't take all of my time because I wanna surf every day. Or So you once you start looking at it like that, then some of these ideals, when someone comes to you and say, hey, there's this great opportunity, then you just go, now that's vo that's violating law number four, six, seven, and eight. So no, we can't do that. So you you developed a feedback and decision making device beforehand. So when opportunity comes your way, you can say that opportunity is awesome, but it's not for me. And you then you free your mental energy because many of you can't think because you're trying to hold on to all these ideals and concepts. And you're not freeing yourself. Uh, I will give you this. This is a pro productivity exercise that I do. Whenever I have an idea or concept, I immediately either text it to my other phone or I email it to my main email address and release it out of my mind. Trying to hold on to that stuff stresses you out and reduces your efficiency as a human being. Yes, it does. And it's very, very it's a simple thing and it's small. But when you start getting rid of those little um, sandbags, call them sandbags that kind of slow you down or stop you, you will be amazed at how your brain will start to operate. It's such a small thing with such big outcomes. All right. So those are your marching orders. That's what you need to do. Be sure to get your free books, 10 Essential Steps to Hustling, the Storage Auction Business Book, and I'm going to go ahead and do it. For everybody, because I'm going to just, the next email on the list is going out tonight. So everybody that gets, you got to get your free books. That's how you're going to be get the notification of what I'm going to do. Because I'm not going to send it to you and I'm not going to put a link. 
And even though this hangout is on YouTube and everywhere, once it's over, it's going private. And the only way that you can watch this again is to buy it on the Hustling 101 tab on Gumroad, which is now 20 bucks. And next time it'll go up and up, up. And oh, on that, if you buy now, whatever else I do, you get that going forward. So I'm telling you, the folks who got the first one, which was free, it was like, hey, pay what you want or nothing. And then someone paid 10 bucks. Well, people that were paying were paying five to 10 bucks. And that was the price. Now, then someone came in a day and <laughs> for some reason paid 20. So now the price is 20. So it's you set the price. And uh, there is the there's two things there. And then later on, this will be there. And then next week, I'm going to be doing this again. I'm going to make this a regular thing. So if you want that information, that's what you have to do. So if you want to be on the list to know about, I'm going to do a mentoring group where we're going to sit back and talk and ask me questions and everything. And I'm going to do it once a week. And the only way that you will know about that is to get your free book. I want you to listen to at least the 30 minute one tonight and then listen to the other one over the week because you will see a lot of reinforcement of these concepts. So there is an offer coming not telling you what it is so you have to get on the list to find out what it is late tonight or early in the morning or whatever you have all right this is glennon thanks for sharing your evening with me i will see you in the next session